In today's episode, we're building up my new Scott Addict Gravel Tuned Edition. What do you think, man? The saddle's not gonna be very comfortable, mate. I thought you were doing the bike build. Why is Jimmy no, unwrapping the stuff? We changing roles did, today. Did we, did we not tell you? Please experiment. don't build my bike. Just I could build my bike forever. better than you. The thing is, I've made what four or five bike build videos now, so I'm pretty sure I can do it without yeah, any watched, instruction. Yeah, yeah, I've watched five bike builds, so you can watch the old one back to reference. No, it's in my head. It's realised that I just watch YouTube videos that tell me how to do it step by step. That's why it takes so long to film them. So there's a couple of exciting things happening here. One, this is a very, very cool build, and Nick will explain more in a minute. Two, Jimmy is here with a camera, and he's gonna be filming a full build video of this bike, which is all like ASMR, and you know, people, every single step of the build will be documented on his YouTube channel, which I'll put a link to down below. And Nick's not allowed to talk, which is great for people who hate Nick. <laughs> when it's just me and you, you're actually quite like, you're focused in like the build, and you like get into it, like you actually like care about it's the bike. You know, and then, and then Francis turns up with his bike, and it's just carnage. And my bike doesn't what, get treated the, the same as his other the, customers. What was the first thing he said? Should we get the beers in? He's never done that with me. This is a Scott Addict Gravel. 45 mil tire clearance, and we're building it up with a mullet style group set. Nick, what's a mullet style group set? It's like Tony's hair, you know, business and front party at the back. Essentially, uh, you're on road bike levers, road bike chain set, and then a mountain bike rear mech, mountain bike cassette, mountain bike chain. So obviously, you can use drop bar levers, but still have the durability and the massive cassette range um, of the Eagle 12 speed rear mech. And I need a massive cassette. You don't need one, but you want one because it just makes sense. Why wouldn't you? If you're coming to ride with me, you need one. <laughs> and that as well. He's not going to ride with you ever. I've been using not having a bike as an excuse. Now I've got proof that <laughs> there is no excuse. Sometimes I have to go riding with Nick so he thinks we're friends and then he'll do this for free. <laughs> Does this for free for I, you? I don't, <laughs> I don't have friends. Only people I, I don't hate. Round two. So like Nick just explained, a mullet group set is road on the front and mountain bike on the rear. So you have a bigger span of gears and you have all the reliability of a mountain bike rear mech. However, this is my first time riding SRAM road bike levers. How do I change gear? Down the cassette. Up, you mean up the cassette? Up the cassette. Down the cassette. Unless you're absolutely mental, like Jimmy Nichols over there, and you switch it around. Where that Why goes, do you switch it around? Down, uh, I didn't even realise I had. It makes sense to me. Like, the cassette, I'm pushing a button, which is basically saying that it's going up, and I'm pushing it that way, and it says it's going down. That makes sense. So is this the weird thing, you've got an app, so you can technically you can change, change it. Yeah, you can change, you can change, it. change it. You can use one lever to shift both ways if you wanted to. Jimmy's bike, every time it comes in to have something done to it, annoys me because it's confusing. But now that he's explained why he's doing it, like I'm actually thinking, it might be on something. Yeah, but I wouldn't have to keep bringing it in if you just built it properly in the first place. I, I've even had conversations with you about this in the past, and you are, uh, I think, probably early versions of SRAM ETAP stuff probably has a reputation for being a bit clunky. Um, but I've, I've ridden Durace Mechanical for like years, and there is, like, in terms of shifting, there's just no difference really. It functions unbelievably well. The batteries thing, like, I would never ever buy DI2 personally, because it just doesn't, like, with the ETAP stuff, if something runs out, I can just take a battery out, put a new battery in, provided it's charged. Or if my rear mech battery runs out, I can just take the mech, the battery from my front mech and switch them around. On my soon-to-be gravel bike, there's also going to be a battery on the dropper post, which I can just, as, as you said the yeah. other day, if my mech battery runs out, I can just take the one from, like... The biggest thing for me is, gravel-wise, is no corrosion on the cables, no dirt going into your cable housing, so your shifts always work. When my bike stops shifting well, I know the jockey wheels are worn out or the uh, chain's worn out. I mean, I was the biggest, biggest camp bike fan ever. Super record all the way. Um, and I wouldn't look back, SRAM for me now going forward. I'll, I'm even happy to ride the Rival, because it just works so well. You fucking snob. You absolute bike snob. Oh, even Rival. Oh, peasant group set. <laughs> I should probably add to this video segment that this is not a uh, video sponsored by SRAM. The distributor in the UK helped me get hold of the parts, but I bought them all. I didn't buy anything, no. Nick, <laughs> Nick didn't buy anything. Don't trust anything he says. <laughs> so new 
on this build are the tyres, Hutchinson Tundras, which are the new gravel tyre, 45 mil, which will fit inside the frame. I'm upset because mine was supposed to be here, but I made a mistake and didn't check when we put the order through that I got 29 inch instead of 27.5. It's a but the perfect tyre for UK and conditions, and yeah. I think you'll agree, especially on the rides that you take people on, yes. which are quite mountain bikey. On the plus side, they're about 15 quid a tyre cheaper than most other tyres we sell, so they're not expensive, even though they're really good. The big thing for us is loads of the tyres out there that loads of the magazines are recommending don't hold their tubeless seal. So eventually, after about a month or two, the bead structures, Hutchinson, and they've been doing tubeless tyres since. They invented yeah. tubeless. Yeah. Sure, Campag Camp used to have in, wheels. In a, yeah. in a cycling space, surely. Yeah, Campag used to have. Uh, in a, yeah, obviously. Campag used to have uh, what they call or still have a two way fit. <laughs> and back in the day, early 2000s, when I was fixing, we no, never, nobody knew what that meant. But essentially, if you fit a Hutchinson tie onto a bike back then or onto a Campag wheel, you could set up tubeless. I've got a question for you, Nick. Yeah. How many wheels that are not tubeless ready can you actually set up tubeless? Legally, none. But I think as long as your tires are good, it's all based down on to the tires. Because even wheels that say are tubeless ready, you can't set up sometimes with the tires or shit. So if you've got a good bead, um, like the Hutchinsons, like the Terravales, better tires makes everything else easy. Obviously, it helps if you've got a good wheel as well. But yeah, you'll see in the video, like this went on straight away on the parkour. What are you doing? I'm trying to tidy up because he's a mess. He's going to make it up. He's going to be so definitely glad. not. Kick off. He hates it when it's up. Fuck me. It feels lighter. Hey, give me So the build is done, it's now the next day, and here's a full rundown of my new Addict Gravel. So the frame is a Scott Addict Gravel tuned edition, which is this black paint job with the white chain stays and the white forks. It's the highest grade of carbon fiber that they do, so the top end model. Along with the frame, you get a synchro seat post, you get a integrated bar and stem. These are slightly different to the ones on the road build. They're flared, these ones are 40 centimeter, and then they flare out to significantly more than that, which will be quite nice in terms of control when you're on the trails. It includes, the same as Tony's bike, a six gram seat post clamp. This frame is a size small. I'm just under 5'9 and run a seat post height of 71 centimeters. Someone's shooting something over there. As we discussed earlier, it's built up with SRAM Red and Eagle mullet style. So absolutely massive cassette on the back, one by on the front. This is a 49 tooth chain ring. The cassette is a 50 10. This kind of setup is ideal if you're gonna be riding loads of steep stuff, which is most of the riding around the Northeast, particularly if you join Nick on his rides. I've opted for 160 rotors front and rear. You can actually fit a 180 on the front of this fork. Those are mounted to slightly custom parkour alters, which is their gravel wheel set, but built onto road hubs, which were in preparation for some riders doing the TCR, the transcontinental race across Europe. And unfortunately the race didn't happen. So I've had them spare. They've been on Daisy's bike for a while and I've borrowed them for this build. Slightly lighter and lower spoke count compared to the usual gravel wheels from Parkour. These are set up tubeless with tiny little finishing touches from Momum. These are purple valves, which look really cool. The nice thing about running tires that are big like this is that you can run lower pressure. So I might experiment with these and see how low you can go. I know Nick with his 650B wheels and mountain bike tires basically runs about 20 psi these aren't quite as wide but you could probably get close finishing touches i'm riding my fidlock magnetic bottles brilliant for gravel because they don't come off garmin rally power pedals these are the spd versions with the bodies you can change so these are set up now for off-road shoes and the last piece on the bike the saddle and i'm probably going to butcher the pronunciation of this a cell Repente, Italian carbon saddle, which I had on my road bike before, it was really comfortable, so now it's on here. And it is really light as well. Contributing to the full build, which doesn't weigh much at all for a gravel bike. Very excited to give it a proper ride in the next couple of days, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to see more nice bikes, check out my playlist, which is on my channel called 
nice bikes. This is the last new bike day for me for a while. I know there's been quite a few recently, but it's because of the sponsor change and everything. Uh, we're now set up gravel bike, mountain bike, and road bike. So I really hope you enjoyed the build videos. I'm excited to ride these for the rest of the year. And now the weather's warming up, do a bit more exploring around here. Thank you for watching and see you guys soon. Thank you.